Hello, I'm Issa Wellen, and this is Issa Wellen's Stories. Welcome. How are you? I'm going to be reading from my work in progress, Caught Balancing Magic. Balancing Magic. <laughs> it's written by me, conceived by me, all the stuff, you know, copyright. So you're going to be kind and not take it for yourself or tell anybody else you wrote it. And you're just here to enjoy the process because let me tell you it is a process and there is much editing that needs to be done on this chapter so not only will I stumble over the words like a very unprofessional reader I am also going to probably pause and be like what does that say a couple times um, this is my second time trying to read through it anyways and I really just want to get this out and get this up for you loyal you five loyal people who keep coming back to listen to to this I want I, just big hug big hug for your patience your endurance and your um, for coming back and being interested uh, stick around towards the end I'm gonna do a little update a little spiel you know all the stuff so that'll be after this chapter I'm only reading one chapter day today are you ready get your coffee settle down snuggle in your bed go for your walk whatever you do when you listen Sometimes I wash dishes, you know, whatever you're doing. And let's get ready to jump back into the world of the Indonesia and Annika, the Hounds, and Calix Argus. Chapter 15, Calix. How strong is the witch caller? Waiting until she was gone, Calix called Max engaged to him casting a thin energy shield around him, around them. The light blue force would contain all sound inside and keep noise out so that no one could listen in. He needed more information about the girl. What did the stepsister tell you? Calix asked. He watched the hounds sitting next to the duos, eyes on the building where Annika had disappeared. Calix didn't know any of their names, only one. All his orders to them went through one, and they responded as a unit. Until today. Annika, apparently, could talk to them as individuals, as if they understand her every word. But Donna's a sweet one, she is. Her father was a shit pervert. That is where Annika learned about how mages treated women, I gather, Max said. Of an age when everything was about sex, the wolf and male had no restraint when it came to females. It was no surprise Max had used sex to gain the information Calix needed. Embedded in his, into his wolf and nature was a need to gather and impregnate as many women as he could. When his kind lived free in the days before the balancing war, they'd been a polymorous race where females outnumbered the males. That type of fertility had made the wolfen and other shifters targets of the consortium. Noel Kind refused to understand the differences in magic or species. They didn't care. They wanted more witches and tried every version of interbreeding that, they, that could produce them. It hadn't worked. What they got was sterile unions, fewer witches, and more disruption in the balance. The result of consortium interference in the natural world was always the counter of their claimed mission. Tell me, Calix said. Max explained in quick detail what he'd learned from the dancer, Annika's age, her mother's name, the mother's and daughter's strangeness. A witch? Here, all this time, in Little Indio. That name sounds familiar, but... How could two natives live here for years? The idea deeply defied the nature of witches and mages. He couldn't grasp it. It also defied all patrol tests. They'd been gathering up natives since the end of the war. Everywhere Calix went, he saw signs of the results of the proctor's laws. Annika was not a child. She had come into her full gleaming would need a mage to consistently siphon off her magic to keep it from be to keep from becoming saturated 
should need a mage, at least. A mage without a witch sickened like stall, with the witch disease burgone resulting in an obvious, painful swelling and coloration of the body. Annika wore those bulky clothes, but he'd had his ass under her hand. There were no signs of sickness. The mother had no shine like the girl, Max said. Mikos found them both using a consortium machine, one they don't use on witches anymore, I guess. They test for The tests are for resonance, Kallik said. If Mikos had a machine testing for other types of energy, it might pick up a witch, too. But that girl has a shine. She just controls it, Kallik submitted. Where did Mikos get a machine like that? Where is it now? Bridonna said it was broken, Max said. The dancer is a void. She wouldn't know if it was broken or not. Maybe it has an ilium sphere, Kallik said. Might as well get something since Stahl was a bust, Max put in. Witches can't control their shine, Gage stated, his face hard with challenge. Kallik took the other man in. Gage was working up to something with that statement. That has never happened. It's not possible. So, is she a high-level void that can talk to your hounds? Gifted? A shifter? Something else? He needed Annika to fit into a role. A box. Good at numbers, at maps, at thinking plans through. Gage was a good knoll to have in the pack. Annika disturbed him with all of her unknowns. She disturbed Calix too. He said, she's a witch. No void can deal with the hounds any more than you or Max can on your own. No one dealt with the hounds except for Hout Calix. His collar on one made them biddable, but didn't save anyone from their nature. Max and Gage wore necklaces keyed to Calix, allowing them to be constantly in the company of the hounds. Even so, they never touched the magic creatures, ever. Unlike this Annika, who spoke to them, pet them, put her face in their fear, and treated them like long-lost pets. The hounds recognized her. It fucked with Calix's head. He'd paid a price for his second life, and the right to hold one's collar, suffered in the bowels of mist and time in a way nothing had prepared him for. He was irrevocably changed now. His insides reorganized, his mind scrabbled, devoured, and reborn a hundred times, paying a debt price he never should have taken on. But the girl, Annika, she paid no price, went through no ordeal. She existed. The hounds adored her. Once he got her settled at his holding, he'd take her to the librarian, and they would find some answers to Calix's questions. Pollux would search the records, test her, find out if she could help Calix with the convoluted bargain, with his convoluted bargain with the Shadow Ancient, or if she was something else entirely, born out, born out of something the Proctor had done to the world, with all his scheming and greed. If she is a witch, she doesn't act like any witch I've ever met. Gage was still twitching from what Annika had done with the hounds. He wasn't going to let it go easily. Not all powers are the same, Noel. You think you've met them all? You walk by so much that you still don't even see. Not just the thousands upon thousands of the dead killed by your people, but those who are in hiding trying to survive. That girl is just one of many. Do you know what she is? Gage asked. She's delicious, Max answered, licking his lips. You won't dare. Calix felt his magic rise to punch the audacious wolfen down and crossed his arm, for- forcing his own self-control. He wasn't sharing this witch. The idea sent an irrational hammer strike of rage through his entire body, catching him off guard. Oh, he'd kill any male who tried to touch her. Max and Gage gave him wary expressions. They must see it on his face, feel it in his aura. 
You okay there? Gage asked, his less than stellar null senses picking up on Calix's agitation. Twitching his shoulders, Calix forks Twitching his shoulders, Calix forced down the sudden rise of possessiveness in his head. He didn't usually get jealous over witches, but there was no doubt Annika was different from anyone he'd ever met. The other mages at his homestead wouldn't be mingling with her, touching her, talking to her. She'd made her terror and her wishes well known, and he'd do what he could to see that she didn't feel violated. No one is to engage with her without my presence and my permission. We already know that the hounds will do anything she asks. Do you really want to take take do you really want to take the chance of pissing that willful country girl off? Do you think I can stop them if I'm not there? When they go to shadow, you don't know where they are. You've said as much. She can call them at any time then? How strong is that witch collar? What will it even do? Gage wanted to know. Are you doubting me again, Gage? One and the others are here. I can feel one's collar. I can feel Annika's. But she can command them? Gage pressed. Calix paused to think it through. Shade stat sat still next to his duo, ears perked watching the lodge building, waiting for the girl to come back. I don't know, he said honestly. I don't know how she's doing it. The girl is wild, but she's not evil. I've tasted that bitter rotten meat. We're just going to have to do like the proctor says and treat each other the way we want to be treated. Twisting the government's propaganda was Max's favorite pastime, but in this, Calix agreed. You stay away from the girl. Leave her to me. Whoever she is, she is a power I'm not leaving for the patrol to find. Eventually, her magic is going to escape. I'd rather it escape in a safe place created for it. Safe at what cost? Gage asked. Do you really want me to discuss that again? Calix returned. And that is the end of chapter 15. I want to remind you quickly that the interaction Ga uh, Max had with Bradonna, the sexy times where he questioned her. I should have put in this bit here, Annika's age, because that is one of the things he learned that Annika is a f adult. I believe I think her age is lands as a young adult, 22, but she is still a full full adult. And in their world, um, you don't mess with underage witches because of the risk of long-term damage. And it is, it, is, uh, um, it is unlawful and you will get in trouble and it is immoral and you will get in trouble. But ever after that, it's, it's all bets off. <laughs> um, this world, women, their value has been reduced to, you know, batteries and baby makers and um, they struggle within that paradigm is that the right word of existence and so some people will hate that I'm still writing about this and some people will be like "Ooh, this is interesting I don't know where do you fall um, so there is a chapter like I was saying that you have not heard I did not record it you can go back and listen and you're not going to find it because it's a smexy chapter between uh, Max and Bradonna and I have that will be reposting that on my ream and that will be for paid subscribers as well not my recording of it because I'm not going to record the sexy bits you're just going to have to go without other than what you the tension that I've already read the next chapter is chapter 16 Annika I don't need a hero, the kiss. And I am not sure if I'm going to read that whole thing. We'll just have to play that by ear. I wanted to give you a few updates. Do I have a book coming out? I The fourth book in the 12 sectors, Redeeming Her Alpha, is still in edits <laughs> and delayed. It was supposed to be out, I was hoping, February. Um, it is now March, and I don't know. I don't have a date for it. Um, 
it's still in my publisher's hands working on keeping the continuity for the series correct uh so there's that update the other update is i'm going to be post posting an interview here pretty soon that we live recorded maybe you saw your light on that um live recording is with sd sun and morgan i don't remember morgan's last name but morgan is a voice actress working on a new drama podcast with sd sun it's a modern show it's a modern mystery detective type show with a paranormal twist set in istanbul with that old sam spade 1940s feel pardon me did i get all that out and i'll be sharing that interview and possibly another one coming up so um, there will be a break in the the uh, continuity of the story. I wish I had two channels. I don't have I can't afford two channels. So um, so that you've got that. What else did I want to tell you? Check my links. Go check my ream. If you want to donate and throw money at this podcast, it does cost me to run it. You can donate through um, my Ko-Fi directly. Um, what else? All the ums. I know. You know, I just recently saw a, a TikTok. You can learn so much in three minutes, let me tell you. But of three things you really need to learn for marketing. And one of them is public speaking and learning how to speak in full sentences, which I can't do. <laughs> I think that's all my updates for now that I can think of. I thank you so much for listening, for coming along uh, this journey with me, for looking at this story with me. I don't have that many more chapters written, and I'm currently going through the old chapters and working on some of the continuity issues that were bugging me so badly. Not rewriting so much, but definitely editing, editing more, adding more, messing it up, and I'm reposting it written on my ream. And trying to catch up to this where I am now. If that makes any sense. Will this book be published? People ask me that. Yes. It will probably be two books, but it will be published. When will it be published? I don't know. What kind of question is that to ask a writer? I mean, pshaw. When? Oh my goodness. Like I would know that. <laughs> Am I working on anything else? Oh, wow. Yes. So good of you to ask. I have on my ream, there is this really fun, very ridiculous. It was supposed to be this dark romance, primal chase, interrogation, capture, fantasy, you know, non-consent, forced seduction type thing going on about an alien um, capturing a girl out after curfew. It has become... It is all that in the first six chapters. When aliens fall in love, especially this alien who has the weirdest sense of humor ever and has messed up his head by watching too much um, Earth media, <laughs> or American media specifically, um, when aliens fall in love, they fall hard, man. <laughs> And some of the things and the quotes that are coming out of this story are just ridiculous. I don't know how anybody is going to read this in the in the broad spectrum. People have asked me, are you going to polish it when you're done? It is almost finished. I could continue it on and as a serial, but as a story, it actually is almost finished. It's it's being wrapped up, um, coming down off of the climax, so to speak. And I don't know. I don't, I really, the Amazon question is an ongoing question. The frustrations of Amazon is an ongoing question. And the investment of publishing right now at this point in time is also a question. So I don't know. But it's a fun story. And I'm as I'm writing it on Ream, I've done a option thing. You, there are always, there are two options after some of the chapters, not always. It probably has happened maybe six times in 18 chapters. And... Readers get to choose the direction of the story, kind of. I mean, I gave them two options, and then I 
just did both because I wanted to do both. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done that a couple times, but uh, I'm not very good at this option, choose your own, but I'm calling it the choose what happens next month story that you didn't know you wanted. And that's on my ream and followers on my ream can read free subscribers read first. And when you subscribe, even though you don't get a whole lot extra, especially to read this story. Um, it helps support me and keeps me writing. And it's very encouraging. I can't tell you how encouraging it is to have people subscribe and see that number pop up. It just makes me feel good. So I want to thank you so much for your support. Links are in the show notes. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I'd love to hear from you. Please share, tell your friends about this podcast, go back, share, cha share the first chapters out um, on your social media. I would appreciate it. And thank you so much. Have a fantastic day.